The human race is the race of explorers. You know, we can't stand not knowing what's beyond the top of that mountain or, you know, on the other side of that ocean. What we're doing here with Curiosity and, and Mars exploration in general is, is exploring a new world. When I was a kid, just looking at pictures from these early Mars landers in the 1970s and seeing kind of this, you know, eye-level view of this exotic planet, but not so exotic, you know? It, it was a surface that I could walk out on and pick up a rock and throw it, and that was intriguing that this other planet, you know, other than Earth, could be so Earth-like. And here we are today, you know, many years later, and I'm driving a, a virtual a rover around Mars taking my own eye-level pictures and, and figuring out how Earth-like this place really is. I think what's exciting about Curiosity is we really are in it for the long haul. And we've barely started. Uh, we've tried out uh, a bunch of our instruments, but we have yet to even take a sample of uh, Martian soil or rock, you know, and that's what we are here for. So one of the things that uh, we're really looking forward to is putting that first material, probably a scooped sample, uh, into uh, our two laboratory instruments. That hopefully will occur in the next month or so. And then we'll uh, get to our first big destination we call Glen Elg. This is a place that we think is associated with a big fan of material coming down the crater rim, possibly a, an environment that formed in flowing water in the distant past. And that's how, where we think we'll take our first sample using our drill. Uh, after we do that, we're going to hightail it up to Mount Sharp, probably take six months to a year to get there, and then we'll spend the next year climbing up that mountain. So we have a, a lot on the agenda ahead of us. We really want to get our first scooped and drilled samples and, and figure out what Glen Elg is all about, uh, but then we need to get on with the exploration of Mount Sharp. Another one of the instruments that Curiosity brings to Mars is called our radiation assessment detector, our RAD instrument. So this is actually putting a detector on the surface to measure the radiation that astronauts will encounter once we explore Mars. So even with our big robotic vehicle, we're paving the way for human exploration. You might ask, you know, with such a capable robot, you know, do we still need to send humans? I think that's a good question, you know, because there's a trade. Uh, with robots, we can do a lot of uh, amazing things. Uh, technology gets better and better and we can virtually operate these rovers just as if we were walking around Mars. And they're much cheaper, of course, than sending humans uh, to Mars. But on the other hand, there's nothing that can take the place of a human's ability to quickly make decisions and quickly survey a terrain on Mars. And, and this was really proven in the Apollo missions. Astronauts were able to walk around, identify things so quickly with rovers, it, you have to send the data back. A room full of people has to kind of figure out what they're seeing in the images. Nothing like putting a human brain, you know, on the surface of Mars to be able to do all those things in real time. So as good as uh, our rover is, you know, it's, it's still, I think, paving the day one day for human exploration.